morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin. You have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 33 years of practicing pharmacy. I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to get off your nutritional, your, get off your medication and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. Eight. Four four two three six sixty ten is our number on the bright side. We love hearing from you. If you've got comments, success stories, questions about anything we're speaking about, or if you have questions about the longevity products or our true skin health products, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. You can find longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And you can uh, find our true skin health products at truthtreatments.com. We've got a special running. For $39, you get a transdermal C serum, trial size, and a full-size biomimetic mineral mist made with fulvic minerals, electrical minerals, as well as sodium lactate and sodium PCA and other what I call biogenic ingredients, ingredients that are found in the skin. That's the key. When it comes to getting effective, powerful skin care, you've got to use ingredients that the skin knows how to work with. It's the same idea with nutrition. If you want to get the most, most leverage out of foods, you gotta use foods that are loaded with things the body recognizes. The biggest problem with our food supply today, and probably the biggest problem with our health, is the fact that we are relying for our our energy and our calories on foods that are largely made up of stuff the body cannot use. That's the key. That's That's what makes a whole food, that's the difference between a whole food and a junk food. A whole food has things, has a higher proportion of uh, substances that the body can use. Processed food does not. And that's the key. That's, that's why eat the, the ch- uh, food choices we make play such a powerful role in how well the body will perform. And that's how we want to think about it, by the way. That we want to think of the body as a performance system. It's a high performance biological machine. It's got a lot in common with a machine, but because it's biological, it's intelligent, it's responsive. When we're sick, somehow we're not responsive. With the intelligence of the body, that we haven't maximized what the body can do. That's the key right there. We're not maximizing what the body can do because we're told that it's flawed. We're told by the medical model it's flawed. But there's so much the body can do from just the choices we make. We've been talking about the, how the medical model relies on memes and mental shortcuts. The problem with these memes and these mental shortcuts is it's kind of like it assumes or presumes certain truths that nobody ever looks at. So there's a meme about cholesterol. There's a belief about cholesterol. Oh, this will lower your cholesterol. These statin drugs will lower your cholesterol. But nobody thinks to ask, is that a big deal to lower your cholesterol? Why is it a big deal to lower your cholesterol? Oh, cholesterol causes heart disease. No, it doesn't. Nobody ever said cholesterol causes heart disease. They say it's associated with heart disease. That doesn't mean it causes heart disease. See the difference? But we don't, get to, we don't see that. I'll bet you if you ask 99 out of 100 people who, even physicians, if cholesterol will cause heart disease, they say cholesterol because it's a meme. It's a shortcut. Cholesterol equals heart disease. Hemoglobin A1C equals diabetes. A PSA scores equal um, prostate problems. Blood pressure scores equal cardiovascular problems. No, they don't. They're associated with it. 
But what's, what is linked 100% is drugs and side effects. That, nobody's arguing that one. Even drug companies can't argue that one. We rely on these shortcuts, these beliefs, these, these memes, and we get sick. And, uh, not that we get sick. We suffer because the marker for being sick is theirs. Forget the diagnosis. Forget the marker for being the, the, the criteria for being sick. We just don't feel good. Because it's not about the cholesterol. It's about feeling good. Cholesterol goes up when your thyroid is not performing right. When your thyroid is uh, not functioning correctly. Hypothyroidism and elevated cholesterol go hand in hand. Now, hypothyroidism, that will cause your cholesterol to go up. And uh, dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, that will cause your cholesterol go, to go up. Now, maybe... The heart disease and the hypothyroidism have a lot more to do with, or, sorry, the, the, uh, hyp the dysglycemia and the hypothyroidism, the messed up blood sugar and the messed up thyroid have more to do with the, uh, the heart disease and the cholesterol. Maybe the cholesterol is being caused by the same thing that's causing the heart disease. It's, it itself is a cause. Nobody thinks to ask that, but if you just study a little biochemistry, you'll see hypothyroidism is linked to, uh, it's, it causes cholesterol to not be used correctly, so it builds up. Likewise with, uh, with uh, messed up blood sugar. So the simplistic, these simplistic ideas don't pass critical thinking. That's the key right there. It doesn't pass critical thinking. We've got to be critical thinkers. And the problem is, is we're told our body's too complex for us to be critical thinkers about our bodies. One of the biggest health challenges we suffer from, and I know smart people suffer from this more than not smart people, it's called overthinkitis. We overthink. The body is not that complex, and it is wired to heal. It's wired to repair. It's hardwired to repair. But the medical model believes the body's flawed, and there's nothing you could do about it. This is just the philosophy of it. It's not, it's not that doctors are bad people. The philosophy of the medical model is that the body is flawed, there's nothing you can do about it, and you got to have statin drugs because uh, the cholesterol is just going to kill you. It's, nobody th we don't th leverage, or a as, uh, as a model, we have not figured out how to leverage what the body can do from a model perspective, from a paradigm perspective. We've got to change the paradigm. We've got to change the model. You've got to change how you look at things. You've got to change the, how you look at the body. You've got to start to see the body as a, a self-repairing system. And so we have to see that when something's wrong, like as in a chronic progressive degenerative disease, whether it's autoimmunity or cancer or acne or whatever it is, that there's something interfering with this ability that it has to repair. And there's no drugs that can do that. That's, there's no drugs that can do it. That's why you don't hear about this idea because you can't sell a remedy for fixing a, a lifestyle problem. How we live our lives is really where these problems arise from. So the medical model, they can, they can hide things, they can mask things, they can disguise things. The famous analogy is the idiot light on your car where you hit it, take a hammer and you smash it so you don't have to see it. The medical model never thinks to look at causes because it doesn't really care about the causes. It just says that's the way the body's, the body's just flawed. But uh, the, uh, the bright side philosophy is the body is not flawed and there are control points and those control points are largely lifestyle choices. Le how we live our lives, which means from the comfort of our own living rooms, kitchens, bathrooms, bedrooms, homes, we can change how our body shows up. We can lower our blood pressure without a beta blocker. We can lower our cholesterol without a statin drug. We can change our digestive situation or how we absorb food without Nexium. We can, there, there's so much control we have over how our body shows up. This belief, this paradigm, now gives us options, now gives us power over how our body shows up for better or worse. And that, that's, the, that's the simplicity of it. It doesn't require an eight-year medical degree to figure this thing out. It doesn't require a, 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 an authority to tell you what's happening in your body. All right, I'm Pharmacist Benny, 442 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Okay, we 
are back on the bright side. Got lines open, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, if you have a, if you have a comment or uh, uh, if you'd like to discuss this idea, memes versus memes versus mechanisms, that's what I call it, memes versus mechanisms, how... Uh, we follow shortcuts. Our brain is wired to look for shortcuts, not to be critical thinkers. We don't critically think. That is the issue. We're not, we're not taught how to think. Schools should be teaching us how to think, not how to uh, memorize. Unfortunately, uh, our public school system, our education system, is not designed to promote critical thinking. And the marketplace is not designed to promote critical thinking either. The marketplace is designed to leverage and take advantage of things that are built in or hardwired into, into our brains by evolution. I was just reading an article today on kidney disease. This is from, uh, where is this thing? From a, a urology journal. I can't find it now. Anyway, they're talking, kidney, oh, here it is. Kidney disease, care for type 2. Uh, kidney, kidney, kidney disease care for type 2 diabetics. Dawn of a new era. Guess what? Dawn of a new era means dawn of new drugs. That's breakthrough drugs, they call them. Kidney disease is blood disease. All disease is cell disease, and all cell disease is preceded by dirty blood. That is the fundamental idea of what I call the bright side philosophy. And why is that? Because the blood gets dirty from the things we do. The blood gets dirty from either injecting things through the skin or eating the wrong food. That's why I say it's so simple. You eat the wrong food, forget the injecting thing, although people who inject medication, or, I'm sorry, inject drugs or inject or get vaccines can be subject to the same kind of blood toxicity issues that people get when they eat foods. You can get autoimmune disease from vaccines because you're, you're now in the blood. The blood is the sacred space. Nothing is supposed to get into the blood unless it has been vetted. Now, under ordinary circumstances, the vetting is going to take place at the level, of, largely anyway, at the level of the digestive system. That just makes sense. That's just common sense. If you were designing a body, you would put the most important defenses at the level of the place where you have the most interaction with the enemy. That's the food. It's as simple as that. When that system breaks down, the blood becomes toxic. That's where disease begins, the disease process begins. Then you have secondary things like the blood sugar problem and hypothyroidism and the cortisol issue, which underlie everything. And there, there's your triangle of disease. And then you have tertiary issues like every, every single chronic Degenerative disease you can name. Those are tertiary issues, third issues. They're third on the, light, uh, on the uh, level. Uh, the, if you could come up with a developmental model, third on the level is what we call autoimmune disease, what we call atherosclerosis, what we call cancer. These are the third, these are the tertiary level of how the, the disease begins. You've got to get to the soil. That is at the level of the digestive system. That's why fasting always works. That's why fasting will always cause your symptoms to be reduced. You may get into some energy issues because your, your body is, uh, has been chronically messed up from an energy perspective, messed up blood sugar specifically. So you may get into some hypoglycemia. You may just sit in bed, but your inflammatory symptoms will always begin to diminish when you fast, always. This is just common sense. This is just logic, biochemical logic. We have so much power over how our body shows up. The body's constantly responding to the environment. So by controlling the environment, you control the body. <laughs> the body is a response mechanism. It's, it's constantly responding to the environment. You change the environment, you change the body. You have a sick environment, you will have a sick body. The central element of the body is the circulatory system. That's what it's all about. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And the body is constantly making adjustments based on what's happening inside the blood. It's constantly reading the blood. It's the, the brain is constantly determining what's going on by reading the blood. If you have toxicity in the blood, you go into emergency, uh, an emergency mode of functioning. 
Not to mention the fact that you're not going to be able to deliver your nutrients and you, nutrients will not get delivered to, to cells and you'll end up with uh, low levels of oxygen, etc. So all chronic disease is located at the level of the blood. If you have kidney disease and the kidneys are remarkably resilient, you have to be down to like 15% kidney function to have, be officially kidney, have official kidney disease. But still, I mean, you want your kidneys functioning 100%, not 20%, 30%, 40%. A kidney problem is a blood problem. The kidney filters the blood. So if you've got a kidney problem, you've got a blood problem. This is just, again, biochemical lo logic, biological logic. And it's not complicated. It's just that we have been told it's complicated, so we don't pay attention. We let other people do it for us. If you have kidney disease, you're out there listening, and you have a poorly functioning kidneys, you have uh, at your tool at your disposal that can not only prevent you from having to go into dialysis, but can turn this thing around so that now you're functioning at super high levels. Wouldn't, doesn't that sound good? If you have kidney disease, doesn't this sound good? You start cleaning the blood, specifically of sugar. It's no accident that diabetes and, and kidney, kidney disease go hand in hand. So... If you're dealing with kidney disease, or you're dealing with any chronic disease, understand that it's at your disposal. Large, uh, the cure, the, the uh, reversal is at your disposal. You can do what you want to do. Focus on the blood. Focus on the digestive system. And don't fall. By the way, I was just reading this an article on paleo diets. Don't fall for fad diets either. Paleo diet is a fad diet. We can't eat paleo because we don't live in a paleo world. Paleo is, off, is, is eating a lot of uh, protein. This is an article, by the way, from uh, the European Journal of Nutrition. I just got this today. Conclusions. Although the paleo diet is promoted for improved gut health, results indicate long-term adherence is associated with different gut flora. Yes, it is. The foods we eat today, the meat we eat today, is not the same meat our caveman ancestors ate. That's the problem with the paleo diet. The paleo diet doesn't take into account that we're not eating the same type of food. It assumes that safe white meat is the same as the kind of meat that our ancestors ate. So I'm not surprised by seeing the problems with the paleo diet. Now, keto, that's not a fad diet. The ketogenic diet is not a fad diet, although... Because we make things into memes, we make things into the little shortcuts, it has become kind of a fashion trend. But the fact is that the keto diet has been around for 120 years. And the keto diet has been, um, has been repeatedly shown to be a anti-seizure diet, brain health diet, weight loss diet, anti-disease diet. I mean, every single marker of health improves when the keto diet is done correctly. Why? Because the keto diet is a low-calorie diet, which is the part nobody wants to talk about. Low-calorie, high percentage of fat, low-calorie, and the keto diet is the ideal way for human beings to eat. And that's why, for over 100 years, it's been uh, shown to have numerous and diverse health benefits. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. That line's open, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. is our number, and we do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about uh, health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you have a comment or success story, we love hearing from you, 844-236-6010. Check out Longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We have blog posts, news stories, videos, lots of free information, and a Join the Team Now link that you can click on if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $30 fee. Go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to remind you to check out truthnourishment.com. And if you have a product that you think is a unique and effective and powerful product, I'd love to put it on the site, truthnourishment.com. Truthnourishment.com, we have a also have the radio programs up there and a blog and newsletters and you can sign up to get a I think it's a weekly or monthly newsletter 
Uh, at, that's at truthnourishment.com, truthnourishment.com. And uh, don't forget to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or does everything your skin needs and nothing it doesn't. And that is all done. Uh, all these products were formulated in my pharmacy, in my uh, wound healing pharmacy. What I discovered was when you heal wounds, you beautify the skin. That is so important. When you heal wounds, you beautify the skin. The same mechanisms that are involved in wound healing are involved in beautification. So when you use a topical product that has wound healing properties, not antibiotic properties like Neosporin, but literally provides this tissue what it needs to, to regenerate itself, you get the ideal beauty product. The ideal beauty product is also going to be a, 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 an ideal wound healing product. And so I turn my wound healing products into beauty products, and that's what uh, Truth Treatments is basically. That's what all the formulations that you'll find at truth, truthtreatments.com uh, are about. Healing the skin. Health is beauty. I've been in this so-called beauty business now for 31 years and as a skincare professional, as a skincare formulator. And if I learn one thing, health is beauty. When, we, when women wear makeup or lipstick, they want to make it look like they're, they're healthy. We simulate health rather than stimulate health in the skin business, in the beauty business. We are satisfied with imitation health because we believe that there's nothing we can do. It's the same ideas that we we're talking about with the medical model. We think the best we can do is lower our blood pressure with a beta blocker. We think the best we could do is stick hyaluronic acid as Juvederm filler, if you will, into a wrinkle to plump it up. We somehow have given up, we've set the bar so low on our health, we've given up on uh, leveraging or taking advantage of the super high performing biological machine. Basically, we don't, even, we don't even know what it can do. That's why I call this program The Bright Side. I want everyone to know what the body can do. All right, zombie eating. 88% of adults dine while staring at a screen according to a survey that was actually commissioned by pretzel crisps, of all people. The results indicate that Americans are so glued to their screens, they rarely stop staring even to eat. The average U.S. eater will stare at their phone twice over the course of any given meal and will only have five screen-free meals per week. We look at the screen. This is kind of interesting. You know, it's been talked about, this whole idea of us being addicted to our screens, mostly our iPhones, but also Internet and television. Something about zombie eating that's really interesting. When you zombie eat, you don't enjoy your food anywhere near as much as when you mindfully eat. Mindful eating is the uh, opposite of zombie eating. Zombie eating is mindless eating. Mindful eating provides super important health benefits, especially if you have a digestive issue, which, as we said, underlie all chronic health uh, degener degenerative diseases, progressive diseases, d diseases that don't get better, where you just get worse over time. So uh, mindful eating turns on digestive juices. Mindful eating activates what's called the rest and digest nervous system. Chewing your food, paying attention to food while you're chewing it, you will notice you're eating far less food when you chew slowly. Food, uh, fast food manufacturers are very aware of this, and they'll put softeners in their chicken, softeners in their buns. So you can you swallow the hamburger or you swallow the Boston chicken. It's got softeners in it so uh, because they know that if you have to chew your food more, you're going to eat less of it. Well, you can take advantage of that. If you want to lose weight or you have a, some kind of digestive health issue, try chewing your food slowly. People sometimes say, I can't fast. I can't reduce my calories. I have to eat. I have to graze throughout the day. Well, okay, graze throughout the day. I don't think you should, but you want to graze throughout the day, but do it with eating every meal that you're grazing with slowly. Just uh, If you had to eat if the most delicious piece of bread, if you had to eat the most delicious piece of bread, bread not being good for you, but you had to eat the most delicious piece of bread and uh, had to chew it really, really slowly, guess what would happen? You wouldn't eat anywhere near as much bread. That's one of the reasons why hard people like soft bread more than hard bread. You can't really find real hard, chewy bread. People don't really eat hard, chewy bread, at least not in a supermarket, probably in a bakery. 
So mindful eating is one of the keys, not just for weight loss and digestive health issues, but just for enjoying your food more. And that's where mindfulness comes from. Mindful, that's where mindfulness comes in. Mindfulness is about enjoying your life more. There is so much wonderful stimuli going in your life. It's almost impossible to be, I mean, it is impossible to be bored. But how many of us are bored all the time? Boredom is a classic uh, result and result of mindlessness. Mindfulness, paying attention to your body, will activate uh, pleasure centers. Dopamine will go up when you're mindful. Oxytocin goes up when you're mindful. That's the, it's no accident that mindful, uh, mindfulness-based medicine is becoming a thing. Johns Hopkins University, Yale University, UCLA Medical School. Uh, all of these places are uh, taking advantage of this, uh, of this concept called mindfulness, which is basically from Buddhism from thousands of years ago, and applying it to medicine, which is kind of interesting when you think about it. A lot of things that, we know, that we've known about for thousands of years are now de be uh, uh, getting scientific, scientific legitimacy. They're being accepted by the mainstream as actually being good for you. That's where fasting comes in. For uh, Fasting's been known about since biblical times. Now, all of a sudden, fasting is becoming a thing. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. Let's go to Bob in Minnesota. Hang on a second here. Let me find Bob. Uh, hey, Ben. Hey, Bob. How's it going, man? What's up, Bob? Do I have Bob? Oh, I don't have Bob there. But, Bob, you there? Are you there? Okay. I apologize. Yeah, I don't know what happened. How you doing? Good, good. What's, um, what's going on? A couple things, and the first one is um, iodine. Is, is there a oh, difference? Say again. I didn't hear you. You cut out there for oh, a second. I, I, iodine. Iodine. Yes, one of my all-time favorite minerals. What's what's going on? What do you, what's your question? Well, basically, uh, I just want to know if there's a difference, if any difference between nascent iodine ah, and okay. ionic iodine. Got it. Got it. Hang on. We have to take a commercial break, and we'll come back, and uh, we'll finish up with Bob right, uh, right after this. Right side talking to Bob in Minnesota. Bob, what's going on? Oh, iodine. You want to talk about iodine, right? Bob? Do we have Bob? We get Bob here. Hey, Bob. Sorry, man. So, oh, iodine, okay, no uh, nas uh, so let's talk uh, nascent iodine, okay? Um, okay? Do you know what it is? Uh, let really. me ask you this. What, okay, it's kind of confusing, right? I mean, it's a, a weird idea. This is Remember we were talking about minerals a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago? We were talking about this whole idea of the quantum nature and the electrical nature and the electromagnetics of everything on the periodic table. That's yep, kind yep. of what nas that's what nascent iodine, understanding nascent iodine requires understanding what we were talking about. So iodine. Are you, are you, are you, are you saying the elk, that uh, nascent is alkaline then? No, um, it, it has an alkalinity to it. Yeah, it's not. It's hard to say alkaline when you're talking about uh, when you're talking about uh, ions like that. But yeah, because alkalinity is more about hydrogen. Uh, pH is a oh, hydrogen okay, issue. Okay. So it's, it's well, thinking, it tends think, towards think... that. It tends in that direction. So here, let me just give it. A, I'm trying okay. to make it simple because it's kind of interesting, actually. Iodine exists as I2. That's two pieces of iodine. Okay, they call it I2. Two pieces of iodine. If you want to put it in water, you've got to stick. To, you got to take one of those eyes away, and you got to stick it with a something like a potassium or a sodium. So you get sodium iodide or potassium iodide. You've heard those terms, I'm sure. So you, you, yeah. I two is two pieces of iodine, two atoms. We'll just say two pieces of iodine, right? They're stuck together. Okay. To get that, that's not going to dissolve in water. But if you take one of those eyes away and replace it with a potassium, right? Then yeah. you got a, what's called a salt, and that goes into water. That's the ionic kind of, that's the typical form of iodine, okay? Oh, okay. Now, if you were to take that potassium away, you would, the reason potassium and iodine go together is because I is negative and potassium is positive. They go together, a negative and positive. Like a, it's called a, a salt. A negative, a negative and a positive that go together are called a salt. Um, like a magnet, kind of. Yeah. I think it's, right? Okay. So if you take that potassium away, what are you left with? 
you're left with something called I minus, I negative, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. That's nascent iodine. Okay. And so okay, so it's ionic- got a negative charge. It's got more electri- electrical energy. It's more electrically active. It's more electrolytic. And I, I don't want to say it's like alkaline, but it's got some of that, those properties of yeah. alkalinity. Of, of, it's like a, a, it neutralizes protons. Protons are pieces of acid. Electrons are pieces of electricity. Elec- electricity uh, in the form of electrons neutralizes protons. So protons are where the bad stuff happens. The electrons neutralize the protons. So it's more like an antioxidant, I would say. I don't think it, I would say alkaline. But it's an antioxidant. It neutralizes the little pieces of acid that are responsible for pain and inflammation and, and disease. And it makes the iodine more active. Uh, you need special machinery to do it. Uh, but I've heard good things about it. Are you on it? Are you, are you doing it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I see recently I, uh, I saw the ion version, which was much more cost effective. Um, yeah, because it's, but, it's got it's a saw. They don't have to use the heavy machinery, probably not heavy, okay. but high tech machinery. I don't mean heavy machinery. So, so, so the nascent is going to uh, assimilate with body a lot easily. It's got more activity. It's more electrical. Okay. And what about then? Would you call the uh, ionic uh, I plus? No, uh, the ionic form is no ion. I plus. Ion the ionic form is. When it's stuck together with a plus, with a potassium or a sodium. Potassium okay. is always okay. a plus. Sodium is always a plus. Like, like for example, sodium chloride. It's table saw, right? Sodium is yep, yep. a plus. Chloride's a minus. I gotcha. Okay? So instead of the chloride, you think you, they just stick the iodide there, and you got sodium iodide. And that's, okay. Uh, okay. And, and that's, that's the ionic form. And that's a little yeah, too much. Very, very I don't know if that's too much chemistry, but hopefully No, no, that's, that's good. It's okay. good. Okay, good. Okay, you got one, time for one more? Yeah, what's going on? Okay, I, I've talked about this before, and I just want to get more clarification. I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but, um, but you know, I talked to you at one point about uh, diving deep into the woo-woo, <laughs> and I want to understand this just a little bit better. Okay. Now, if I understood you correctly in the past, yeah. you know, uh, uh, the, the body is uh, one big web of uh, superconductivity, uh, it's that, definitely a superconductor. That's that's yep. one of the coolest things it is. Yes. That's that, very that you cool. get these instantaneous single signals yeah. across the yeah. body. That's right. That's right. Okay. And then basically, um, I was talking to you about the fact that if a person was able to mitigate their body stresses through mental techniques and diet, yeah. Yeah. theoretically, a person then would not feel would not have to take any supplements. Because they would be basically in a state where they could put their body in a placebo effect. To Theoretically, I, I believe that's I believe that. that's yes, I believe that's true. You believe that to be true, right? Okay. Yeah, I believe so that's with, that, with, with that being that, then your body is not able to make less vitamin C. Are you telling me though that through the placebo effect, then you're going to effectively? Uh, I mean, I, you're, you're just talking the body's theoretically. Going to react like this, as if there is vitamin body. You're talking theoretically, okay? Right. Practically, I doubt that will ever happen. Theoretically, yes. Theoretically, okay. I believe that's the case. Now, you know, I, but I don't know. It's a theory. That's just a theory. It doesn't really matter if it's true or not. It matters that if you believe it, you get power. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm not telling you what, when I say these things, I'm not telling you, don't saying them, them like they're true. I'm saying them like they're powerful. To me, true, I don't know, you know, true is just this vague term. I want to know what works. That's what okay. my goal here is what is going to be practically applicable to your life that will have benefit for you. Whether it's true or not, I don't even know. I don't even care. You know, I happen to believe it's true, but, you know, how are you going to know okay. definitive truths, right? Everything is subject okay. to, to opinion and, 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 you know, experience. There's so many variables here. The fact is it works. It works to believe in things. It works to visualize. It, I mean, talk to Russell Wilson, the quarterback for the, for the Seattle Seahawks, who visualizes before every performance. It works, Okay. I don't yeah. know whether he can visualize vitamin C, you know, <laughs> he can yeah. use his, I don't know the answer to that. I say theoretically, it, I'm going to go with that. Okay. I'm going to go with that. That will give you a control over your body that another belief system will not. And if, this is what we're talking about here, picking your belief systems practically, 
What do you, we take our belief systems on from people who are selling us things or people who are ignorant themselves. Take your belief yeah. systems on with a, intention. Pick your belief system. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the, the, the theory of uh, you can reverse the rust on your car electrically, but good luck trying. Um, I, I, maybe. I, I don't know anything about that. Is that true? I mean, you know yeah. how that works, yeah, you, by the way? You're supposed, to, you know, you're supposed to be able to, I mean, theoretically, you know the logic to, to that? Reverse. Do you want to hear the logic to that? It's exactly what we were talking about with iodine. You're driving, ele electrons are antioxidants. Rust is oxidation. Right, right. Yep. Right? Yeah, so that's exactly. where electrical energy. So maybe that's a theory. I, I didn't know. I didn't know that was a theory. Is that true? Do you, uh, did they tell people? Yeah, that? yeah. Theoretically, that's why you uh, want you minerals know, in your diet. That's basically but, why but, you but want yeah, minerals. But yeah, in your you're diet. not going to be able to do it trying to, you know, that type of thing. But like you're saying, electrically, you know, you're reversing the oxidation process. You're reversing oxidation. Electrons are antioxidants. In fact, all the things you hear about with antioxidants, like from your veggies and such, they work because of electrons. They contribute electrons. When you take iodine and, and, and fulvic minerals and, these and you walk barefoot, you're getting the electrons directly from the earth or from the foods. And that's really, that's how we're designed to run. We're designed yeah. to run with elect electrical energy, pieces of electrical energy that will neutralize the stressors. It's a constant interaction between stressors and anti-stressors. And it's just a question of balance. Every living system is in this constant dynamic flux of uh, stress and non-stress, of activity and rest, of on and off. The electrons are, are, are uh, uh, neutralize the protons. It's this constant dance, this constant bounce back and forth. We get electrons from food, and the protons are the end result of metabolism, the, uh, of, of, the, of the breakdown of, uh, uh, of energy-delivering compounds inside a cell. That's why if you have too much protons, you, they say you're acid. Protons are acids. So you say you're acidic. Well, the problem isn't the acid as much as it is the lack of electrons, which is why walking barefoot is so important. Anything you can do okay. to drive electrons into the system is going to be your, in your interest. Is that good, Bob? Gotcha. Yep, yep. Okay. Just lean towards uh, it. That's, that's your best what's shot. that? What's that? Just lean, lean towards it. That's, that's your, best, uh, you know, your best approach. Well, how, be specific. I don't know what that means, lean towards it. Well, in other words, uh, knowing that that is uh, theoretical, uh, true. Ah, yes, head in that direction, yes. Head in that true direction enough, is the you make your own do. vitamin. Yeah, lean towards it. That's good. I like that. All right, that's it. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. Bob always has really smart things to say, and I appreciate all my smart, bright side listeners. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.